Rising of the Shield Hero had it all, an interesting premise, popularity, legally binding friendships. So what led to it going from an anime as popular as Overlord to an anime less popular than Konosuba, Sovie? And how on God's square earth did we end up here? To answer this question that nobody has asked since 2022, we're gonna have to rewatch the anime together. Our main character Naofumi is isekai to another world alongside three heroes, the bow hero, sword hero, and the pedophile. They're brought to the king who asks them to save this world from the waves of calamity, which are periodic events that teleport the four heroes to fight waves of enemies where they must defeat the boss for the wave to end. And while you may be thinking this is just Bloons tower defense, it's very different. The enemies actually move in Bloons. Now there are three problems that Naofumi faces. One, his fellow heroes are, hi guys, I'm Naofumi. I work alone. Um, okay. If her age is on the clock. Don't, don't say that. And his translator is broken. Stupid. They're stupid. And although they may be stronger than him, he's also unable to party with them because of plot. Two, he can't use other weapons and has no offensive abilities outside of really big punch, meaning he relies on a party. Three. Three. Curse shield user. Round objects scare me. Certain high-ranking people are slightly racist when it comes to those who main Winton. Because of this, nobody picks Naofumi as their starter, but he's an optimistic man. He'll be fine. Please join me. Please, 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 please. Out of respect for Naofumi tossing away any self-respect, dignity, and pride that he had, Princess Malty joins his party. It sure will, buddy. Naofumi got me tooed by Malty. How could he? It ain't when right. a boy becomes a man. They can't simply kill him since they need all four heroes to save the world and to get new heroes would require them to all die. So their only option is to subjugate him to a lifetime of verbal abuse. After this betrayal, Naofumi becomes Batman. But what is a Batman without his Robin? So he heads over to the local involuntary orphanage. <laughs> This one is cheap because she's basically dead. I see, so adjacent Todd. She also comes with electroshock therapy for any unwanted affection. Oh, so more of a Tim Drake. I also must warn you that she has severe PTSD from her dead parents. A oh, perfect addiction. He purchases the demi-human Raftalia, but <laughs> don't worry guys, now for me isn't like the other people. See, they even included a scene showing how bad other people treat their slaves. She even has McDonald's. Those other slaves don't have McDonald's. Well, shit. Life is good, best I've ever felt. These first two episodes set up five things that the viewer is interested in. One, you wanted to watch him redo of the shield hero so that Naofumi can get revenge on Malty and the King. Two, you wanted to see him rise up and clear his name. Three, you wanted to see more of this unique team dynamic since he can only protect, protect, and assault sexually, allegedly. Four, you wanted to see Naofumi fight off the waves. And five, you wanted Raftalia to get Stockholm Syndrome. This is when the show was at its best. They fought off the first wave, saved some people, Raftalia even became the legal age of level 18. A problem that was immediately fixed. You may have thought that Tony the slave trader was bad before, but only now do you realize how scummy he truly is. He runs. Cut your loot boxes. Oh god. On the bright side, Naofumi got Philo, the chicken lolly slave. But your honor, they flock to me. While traveling, Naofumi unlocks the Rage Shield. A shield that gives great strength, but... I can't let the vengeance consume me. The power of friendship brings him back so that he can use it, which definitely won't be a reoccurring thing. Eventually, the third wave hits, yet things are different this time. The Nitwit 3 fucking suck. This forces Naofumi to use his Rage Shield. The power of friendship brings him back. Suddenly, a strange woman appears who's obviously evil because she's over the age of 10. No attacks work on her. What can they even- They run away. After this, the crown princess Melty meets with Naofumi in hopes that he'll become best friends with the king. But suddenly... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Here was Malty's big plan, frame the shield hero to make it appear that he killed the princess so that she can be next in line for the throne. This means she had two real options. Option A, kill Malty before running into the shield hero, throw her at his feet, get Peter Parker to snap the photo, then use the magic photoshop ball like she was gonna use anyways. Option B, wait for her to be standing next to the shield hero before having someone run at her with a sword from a mile away in the direction he's looking. She went with option B. This led them to escape, and what was Malty's big backup plan? A gender reveal party. But your honor, they flocked to me. Now, who else would enter this story other than the Pope, of course? Wow, what a nice guy. Here's the deal, he wants these three heroes dead in order to summon new heroes since they are mere magic carps of men, which is honestly a good point. And he wants Naofumi dead because he's racist, which is slightly less of a good point. This is where we once again run into a stupidity problem. You see, the Pope has two weaknesses. Altar boys and his attacks take a long time to charge, which means logically you should attack him instead of standing in the giant fucko zone. They don't do that. I, I think now's a good time to talk about our feelings. But I'm a creep. And I really think I deserve an apology. He's running uh, uh, done now. With the help of the queen working together in the RAID SHIELD, which is stopped by the power of friendship, they murder the Pope. Hashtag the Pope was right about the heroes, not the racism. Now, this is probably a good time to mention that the world is a matriarchy, meaning that the queen holds more power than the king. This is great news for now for me, because as you know, women aren't racist. The queen even holds a public execution for Malty and the king to clear now for me's name, but he had other plans in mind. Oh, now for me sentences them to a lifetime of <laughs> verbal abuse. In the last part of the season, the only important information was that these three are from another world and want to kill the four heroes to destroy this world so that theirs can survive. And now for me got a pokey daycare. Within the first season, we've solved four of the original five things that the viewer was interested in. His name has been cleared up and he's viewed as a hero again, unless you watch Fox News. He got his revenge, although not as much as some would have liked. He can now attack with his shield, so although the original dynamic is still there, their main goal is to be Black Widow in fights. Stop now for me, this isn't you. Look at me, look at me. Oh, and Raftalia has Stockholm Syndrome now. The only interesting thing for him left to do is to fight off the waves, learn to work work with the other heroes and to stop the multiverse, which is not as interesting. I could just play Call of Duty with three other middle-aged white men and get the same effect. This means next season, they need to do something that will hook the viewer back in. So there's this turtle, right? One of the guardian beasts. They stop the waves normally, but this one is being forced to do the rumbling, so the heroes. Oh, oh yeah, my dog yeah, can't can't do, not a pigeon, because I'm day, out of so. town. So now for me, must find a way to stop the turtle with the help of his new young teammate, Greeny. But your honor, they flock to me. Greeny's story is that she was a poor noble, but she was happy. But then she wasn't. But then the bow hero saved her and let her join his team, and she was happy. But then she wasn't. This led her to join the Naofumi Adoption Agency in hopes of proving herself. The only problem is she's very shy. <laughs> what do you look so proud about? Oh, right. The solution to all your problems have been... This is when they start shoving information down your throat. This is the turtles familiar, Grandma Tsunade is here, so are these guys. Come on, you remember these guys. This guy, don't worry about it, he's dead now. They're here too, and best friends now, and I have no clue who this pink haired woman is, but she'll be a reoccurring character. The person responsible for unsealing the turtle was XX underscore wife took the kids underscore XX. A vassal hero from the other world who is here to take some turtle juice to do some evil things because he's just a really bad guy. To stop him, Naofumi uses the Rage Shield. The power friendship brings him back, they kill the turtle, killing the turtle spirit woman too because she was the turtle all along.
It may have sounded like I skipped over a lot this arc, that's because I wanted to give an accurate description of how it felt watching it. The pacing was a hate crime, here's a new character, oh she's dead now, doesn't that just make you feel sad? Surely you fell in love with this character and her 9 lines of dialogue. The fights were zoomed in, the Cabbage Patch Kid CGI Turtle! This is when the declining of the shield hero began. Following XX underscore wife took the kids underscore XX, they jump into a magic portal where Nalfamian slaves find themselves separated from Philo, trapped on a mysterious island with their levels reset. Eventually, they run into another vassal hero, Kizuna. She tells them that this is an inescapable labyrinth where she's been trapped for many years with no way to- They escape the same episode. Like Philo, Raftalia has been abducted in this strange new world. Despite replacing her with the newer model, the gravity of the situation begins to weigh down on now for me. Oh, look, it's Philo. Oh, look, it's Raftalia, who escaped with the other three vassal heroes. They're best friends now. It's been two episodes. Sorry, I was just editing and getting a clip. I want you to pay close attention to their eye movements. The kiddo and I are on the same team again. Glad you made it. <laughs> Why is he talking yeah, like that? I did after you ran away. And <laughs> look, look at the facial expression. Hey, who told you that? <laughs> look at this. <laughs> what does he look like? This is when we finally see the villain's master plan that we've waited for for 10 episodes. He can now speed up the next wave by 36 hours. Now for me does the rage shield. He's brought back by the power of friendship. Kyo dies and everyone goes home. This was the season where everything became cliche. Let me explain why the power of friendship worked in season 1. Now Fumi lost everything, he had no one he could trust, and when Raftalia was given the option to leave him, he thought she would betray him too, but she didn't. For once, he had someone that he could trust. Now, he mass produces Raftalias, in fact, they flock to him, the children yearn for the unpaid labor. Not to mention this garbage villain, I mean his whole backstory is he was reincarnated when he killed himself after accidentally giving someone his Epic Games password. But he did have the Omega Lights, so understandable. Much like the first part of the season, it was way too rushed. To put into perspective, everything I'm about to say happened in a single episode. Raftalia is abducted and taken to prison, four minutes later she breaks out with these three, she has an entire training arc, stumbles across a vassal weapon, the weapon chooses her, now she's a full grown adult, now she's naked, she kills some people and reunites with Naofumi. The reason for shoving so much information into each episode is because they tried to cram light novels 6 through 9 into 12 episodes, which didn't work. The one saving grace was that the nitwit 3 didn't show up unless they were getting tortured, but I still have to talk about Life could be a dream, life could be a dream. Episode 13 in my eyes was just an OVA, you had fan service for this guy. What about Filler about Kizuna being trapped on the island alone making sea castaway jokes, and they had these family guy ass cutaways. Hey, remember that time Turtle Woman taught Raft Alley about sex? Gonyo, Gonyo, Gonyo. Uh <laughs> Still the best episode of the season, but maybe next time get rid of it to put more time into the actual story. Where did this animation come from? Everything felt right, the blacksmith was blacksmithing, the three heroes were missing, we even went back to slavery plot lines. My thoughts exactly, Philo. Now Fumi wants to free some more Digimon, but he needs money to do so, which is why he joins the Fight Club. The story is great, it's not focused on the fate of the world, the characters are interesting and this time very of age. <laughs> I mean, it is called a blowhole for a reason. Maybe I would have enjoyed this arc more if it was longer than three episodes. Remember the Nitwit 3? Well, now they're really sad, leaving it up to now for me to save them. But instead of listening to their fellow hero, they listen to Malty. How do you let this obviously evil woman gaslight you after season one? <laughs> He got played, so he put on the mask, because it's his curse to bear now. Thank goodness random pink haired woman was there to save the day. Still have no idea who she is. Oh, and remember that animation we had earlier? This is what we have now. <laughs> the 
The original appeal of the show was that the shield hero had to rise. That's what hooked most of us. He was just an outcast that had to save the world that he hated. It was when he was hated that we got the most world building, character development, and sure, we got some weird Batman quotes. <laughs> That's not how it works! But as soon as season 1 ended, that all went away, there was terrible pacing, no character development, CGI Charizard, and these enemies aren't moving! This is why many fans like myself quit watching around this time. The power system was pretty bad too. Every fight boiled down to who had the higher level, what skills they had, how many teammates, and which one had a rage shield. The leveling system wasn't as rewarding as it was in the beginning, which makes sense considering they were level 78 by the end of season 1. It is weird because if Raftalia's age corresponds to her level, well, here's a rough sketch I made of her at level 78. Even resetting their levels had virtually no effect because they made it to level 80 in 6 episodes. The story constantly found ways to nerf their characters, just look what they did to Raftalia! Oh, and I guess that time they nerfed her with AIDS or something. I do feel bad for the team that had to condense so much information into 12 episodes since the main way to fix every problem I had with the show was giving it 25 episodes like the first season. But this is just the problem every light novel adaptation faces, it's impossible to include every detail otherwise we would get important information like, look, you're all clean now. Yay! I pour a bucket of hot water on her to wash away the bubbles and Philo shakes her entire body like a dog to dry herself. Is he the shield hero because he's the weakest, or is he the weakest because he's the shield hero? Now for me is such a well written character it honestly pisses me off. Like when he turned away my good friend mechanical murder bot from his town, I was in disbelief, shaking and crying. She obviously wasn't evil, she's like 15. But your honor, they flock to me. But you have to respect the author for writing him like someone who is scarred and doesn't let things go like airport security. And I owe you an apology, I wasn't really familiar with your game. But your honor, they flocked to me. Malty was one of the best characters in the series, you can tell by how upset people got with her. If she didn't exist, this show wouldn't be nearly as popular as it was because people love to hate things. I mean, look at K-pop fans when they see anything that breathes. But the people that really killed my enjoyment of the series were the Nitwit 3. These idiots somehow relapsed more than my alcoholic father. Sure, it's part of their character, but it's not fun to watch your recycled plotline when A, you don't care about the characters, and B, you don't care about the characters. They all just need to stop thinking like Sanji. A man forgives a woman's lies. Rin specifically is my least favorite, which is crazy to say considering one would be best friends with Dream, but he does have a good book going for him. Meanwhile, Rin shares similarities and the voice actor of Kirito, which is just disrespectful to my glorious king. What made it worse is that the author just keeps dropping new main characters every episode to the point characters you actually enjoy like Raftalia and Raftalia get pushed to the side. Don't even get me started on Giraffe Child. What does he want? What's his goals? He's planning something. Overall, I'll never forget what an impact the Shield Hero had on my life. Thank you, Maple. Zero out of ten, but did you know that in terms of male human and female demi human breeding, Raftalia is the most compatible demi human for you? Hello, Outro Luna here. Click here to check out my second channel. Click here to check out the recommended video. And click here to check out the most recent video. And use code Luna for 10% off at Gamer Sub Checkout. And Discord. I'm not wearing cocky pants. I'm not wearing any pants.